Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and in today's video, we are going to find out the time period of oscillation uh, of a spring mass system when we are considering the mass of the spring as well. So usually when we talk about the spring mass system, uh, we neglect the kinetic energy contribution due to the spring and hence as a result, uh, it comes out to be independent of the mass of the spring. But in reality, the spring might have comparable mass as compared to our block and hence we cannot neglect its contribution. First of all, let's consider the mass of the block uh, as small m and let's consider the mass of the spring as capital M. Okay, so let's say this is the equilibrium position and we displace our mass m to the right by an amount of x. So this is how the situation is now looking like. So and let's say the velocity of the block uh, at this particular point is v. Now we can also say that the velocity of the block is simply dx by dt uh, or we can also write it as x dot. So first of all, let's try to determine the kinetic energy of the system. So the kinetic energy of the mass m is fairly simple, right? It's half m v square. I'm simply going to write it as x dot squared. Now the tough nut to crack is the kinetic energy due to the spring. Okay guys, so and at this particular point, we have to make an assumption. Okay, and that is the displacement of the spring is a linear function of the distance from the fixed end. Now, what does that mean? So, we know that uh, the mass got displaced by an amount of x towards the right, right? Okay, so now if I ask you, what is the displacement of the spring? Well, the answer to that is, it depends, right? Because the uh, end of the spring that is attached to the mass will actually get displaced by an amount of x. Whereas the end of the spring that is attached to the wall does not move at all, right? It's fixed to the wall. Uh, I'll explain what the assumption exactly means in a bit. Uh, first, let's try to look at a differential element. So let's move a distance s along the spring and let's consider a spring of, a, of differential width ds. Okay. Now, what we're trying to determine is what is the displacement uh, of this differential element of the spring in terms of x. We can actually show that uh, with the help of a graph. So if you want to draw the displacement as a function of s, we know that the, the displacement of the end attached to the wall is zero and the displacement uh, of the end attached to the mass is x itself. So what is the displacement of this uh, element of the spring at a distance of s? And the answer to that is we can find it easily with the help of the graph. Uh, so this length is going to be the slope of this line times s, right? And that will come out to be x by l times s. So basically this end, a distance of s from the wall will displace towards our right by an amount of x by l times s. So the velocity of the spring element uh, at a distance of s is going to be s by l times dx by dt or x dot. And x dot is simply the velocity of the block itself. Okay guys, so now what we are doing is trying to write the kinetic energy contribution due to this small ds element over here. So we can write the kinetic energy as half dm v squared, right? The uh, So the mass of the ds part is going to be the mass per unit length of the spring, which is going to be m by l, and l is the natural length, by the way, this multiplied by ds. So this is going to be the dm mass of the spring multiplied by uh, the velocity at s squared. So that'll be s by l squared times x dot squared. Okay, so I should have written tke because this is the elementary contribution to the kinetic energy. So now I would have to integrate this expression. Uh, we are ca computing this integral when the velocity of the block is v. So, in so this integral over here is independent of x basically or x dot. So we can take it out of the integral. So the limits of s will be from s equals zero till s equals l and uh, because the natural length of the spring, we are taking it to be l itself. And after calculations, this comes out to be one by six m x dot square. So we took t as our total kinetic energy and that will be the half small m x dot square plus 1 by 6 capital M x dot square. So the potential energy of the system is going to be the energy stored in the spring which is half k x squared. So the total energy of the system is simply going to be uh, I basically took half x dot square common plus half k x squared. So we now have an expression for the total energy of the system. So if I differentiate the energy with respect to time, it should come out to be zero as there is no damping agents or friction present in the situation. The energy shouldn't change with respect to time. So the derivative of x dot square is going to be 2x dot times the derivative of x dot. So that is x double dot. Derivative of x square is 2x times x dot. Okay guys, so I can cancel out the x dot terms because there's a zero on the left side. So finally, we end up uh, with a very similar looking equation that is x double dot equals minus k by m plus capital M by three times x. So this is, and for the normal spring mass system where, where we ignore the mass of the spring, the x double dot came out to be minus k by m times x. So you can actually just consider this case as an additional mass of m by 3 kept on top of our block and they are simultaneously oscillating. The displacement as a function of time in this particular case came out to be uh, some constant amplitude times sine of omega t 
plus phi, uh, where omega uh, was square root of k by f. It is going to be exactly the same of a sine omega t plus phi, but here omega is going to be square root of k by small m plus capital M by 3. And you can also write the time period. So the time period is simply going to be 2 pi by omega itself. Okay, guys. so now if you want to write the displacement of the spring element at a distance of s from the wall. So from here, we know that the displacement at the end s. So this would simply come out to be s by L times uh, a naught sine omega t plus phi. So this is what the displacement at the end s of the spring is going to be and you can also compute the velocity by differentiating this with respect to time. That was it for this video guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.